Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to one of the weirdest rocks in our solar system, the asteroid known as Phaeton. This particular rock, as you can see from what is on your screen right now, is most likely blue. That's right, this rock is blue and we don't really know why. But it's also responsible for what's uh, actually happening uh, this month in the mid of December. The Geminid meteor shower that usually happens around this time every single year. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about what we know about this rock, but really what we don't know about this rock as well. Welcome to What The Math. So first of all, this rock was actually discovered back in 1983 and um, back then we didn't really know much about it. But we realized pretty quickly that there was actually um, a kind of a pattern between the orbit of this asteroid and the uh, very famous uh, meteor shower known as the Geminids. This meteor shower usually occurs around early December to mid-December and I believe this year it might actually start around December 5th. And um, just like with other meteor showers, it's essentially uh, tiny, tiny particles that were left by uh, usually a comet uh, that essentially collide with the upper atmosphere of our planet, leaving behind these beautiful streaks that we then call uh, shooting stars. But in this particular case, um, this rock is not really a comet. And as a matter of fact, um, it doesn't seem to produce any cometary tail, even though we think that maybe a long time ago it was a comet. So we actually currently think that this is most likely a dead comet. Uh, we actually refer to it as a rock comet because it's technically all rock now, but it may have had cometary like features uh, years or not really years, but hundreds, thousands, or maybe even millions of years ago. But there are actually a few more really unusual features about this particular rock. Oh, and by the way, its size is approximately 5.8 kilometers in, in diameter. So it's, it's really, really large. And um, it is technically classified as a near-Earth asteroid or a potentially hazardous asteroid, so it may actually come relatively close to our planet and even maybe even collide with it. But let's look at its orbit first, because its orbit is actually kind of cool and very, very unusual. So it has an extremely, extremely eccentric orbit, and it actually crosses all four terrestrial planets. So this is when it's at its farthest from the Sun, it then passes Mars, it passes Earth, it also passes Venus and Mercury, and comes to about 0.14 AU, um, which is about 20 or so million kilometers away from the Sun. Very, very, very close distance, and we're actually gonna wait for it to get there right now. Um, and then it goes back to its previous location. Now, interestingly, um, because it's an asteroid that crosses all four orbits, it has a potential to collide with any of the terrestrial planets. We've calculated uh, the sort of path uh, for the next 400 years, and we know for a fact that it's not going to collide with Earth in the next 400 years. But it did approach Earth really, really close back in 2017, and actually uh, was within about 10 million kilometers of our planet. And so it's most likely going to collide with one of the planets, we just don't know which. Um, but at the same time, based on its current surface characteristics, we think that it's been actually orbiting in this location for a very long time. So here's the thing. This asteroid, uh, despite being blue, is actually also very, very, very dark. It's only a little bit lighter than charcoal, so it has a very low albedo, which means that it absorbs a lot of the light, which also means that it gets ridiculously hot here. The temperatures right now, when it's close to the sun, are approximately 1500 degrees Fahrenheit or about 800 degrees Celsius. And because it actually contains metals on the inside, it's essentially an asteroid, so it does have some metal there. A lot of the metal here starts basically melting and creates a kind of a very unusual sludgy-like material on the surface. And then when it moves away from the sun, it solidifies again and uh, essentially changes the surface of an asteroid. And so if we were to look at the surface right now, it would most likely be covered in this really, really dark, scorched, bluish material um, that's kind of partially metal, partially rock, and partially some leftover stuff from when it was a comet. 
And interestingly, we think that it could survive in this orbit for a long time until it's essentially collides with something. But because it's not emitting any more tail and it's not really emitting any particles like a typical comet does, it may potentially become uh, one of the first objects in our solar system that has this unusual property of being super, super charred, super burned by the sun and um, have this unusual kind of a crusty surface. Now, the scientists today still don't really know why it's bluish. Now, it's very difficult for me to recreate blue color here, but we do um, know for a fact that it has a blue hue. It's bluish on the surface. At the same time, um, we think that maybe it's because actually of certain metals that reacted with the solar radiation and turned blue. But right now, it's actually anyone's guess. We don't really know how to explain it scientifically. But luckily for us, in 2025, we might be able to finally answer all of these questions because this mission right here from the Japanese scientists from JAXA um, are launching the so-called Destiny Plus satellite that is going to take off in 2022 and then do a really, really fast fly by the uh, Phaeton uh, asteroid and study all of the particles in its vicinity, take some photos, possibly even uh, have a chance to study the surface a little bit. But because it's a flyby, we won't really be landing here. Nevertheless, in 2025, which is essentially about seven years from when I'm making this video, we might be finally able to answer the question of why this rock is blue why it acted like a comet but doesn't anymore, and also what the actual surface is made out of, and if it's something that we need to investigate in a little bit more detail. But most importantly, we might be able to actually answer a few mysterious questions about our own solar system that, that we couldn't really answer before. So for the most part, this is actually a pretty exciting mission. And if you're watching this from the future, specifically 2025, when this mission may have already been finished, um, do leave a comment below. So what did we actually find? Because I would like to know. Anyway, so we'll definitely be making more videos about this particular mission in the future, especially when it takes off. And we might even be able to recreate this in one of the simulations. Until then though, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. And hopefully now you know a little bit more about this unusual, weird, bluish rock in our solar system, known as Phaeton. More specifically known as 3200 Phaeton. It's an asteroid that was discovered in 1983. Thank you for watching, please subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space and sciences through simulations, and come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye. And maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot.